If you guys watched our full video review of the Ryzen 1800X, you'll probably remember this particular scene. But I really, really feel like on April 11th, when the Ryzen 5 1600X launches, now that it's past the point of embargo lift, you'll be able to see why we had to cut out the part where we said we believe the Ryzen 1600, the Ryzen 5 1600X was going to be the Ryzen Suite 16. Okay, with that out of the way, what we're looking at today is the lineup of the new Ryzen 5 series, at least on the X variant. So the top tier, the 1500X and the 1600X will be the focus of this video. Now, rather than spending another half hour going through the specifications, some of the quirks about the chip, a lot of the same things exist here in the Ryzen 5 series. So you still got the dual CCX modules and we'll look, look at how those are configured here in just a moment, but you've still got the uh, same AM4 platform. This go around, we're gonna be using exclusively the B350 uh, for these testing. So, and as a measure of less complicating things, we're going to stick with just the, Ra the Ryzen series CPUs. But Keith, what about the Intel variants? Don't worry, we've got another video coming. We're taking a look at that too. But being launch day, you're probably looking all around here on YouTube and you're seeing me completely surrounded by various channels doing a huge battery of tests against various CPUs. Again, wanted to take this focused in specifically on the Ryzen series. So if you're looking for a Ryzen CPU, we're gonna hopefully help you narrow down whether you want the quad core, hex core, or octa core processors, so four, six, or eight C CPU cores with SMT enabled. So without further ado, let's start talking about the processors themselves. We're not going to spend any time talking about the Ryzen 7 1800X because if you want to know more about that CPU, hit the card up there in the corner and you'll be able to see the full half hour review if you have the time to st stomach for that. Now, in addition to those numbers, we've also gone ahead and expanded our test suite to include even more games, more configurations for those games and so forth. Now, the CPUs today we're taking a look at being the Ryzen 5 1600X and 1500X. Let's take a look through these uh, specifications right off the bat. The Ryzen 5 1600X features a 95 watt TDP, same as the 1800X, with a 3 plus 3 CCX configuration. So three cores on each four quad core CCX module. So two, one core off each has been disabled or was non-functioning to result in the 3 plus 3 configuration. Still features 16 megabytes of L3 cache, uh, 512 kilobytes of L2 cache per core with a base frequency of 3.6 featuring an all core boost of 3.7. And then when you have two cores active, we'll go up to four gigahertz as well as a 4.1 gigahertz XFR, which is a nice little bump. And from what we've seen here is a bit more aggressive on the clocking than the 1800X. So clock junkies may like that. The Ryzen 5 1500X features a much lower 65 watt TDP, a two plus two CCX configuration where two cores are either disabled or non-functional on each of the CCX modules resulting in two plus two or quad core design still features the full 16 megabytes of L3 cache as well as 512 kilobytes of L2 cache per core resulting in half that and you know, two thirds that of the six core. Either way, moving on to the clock frequencies, this one features a lower base frequency of 3.5 gigahertz with an all core boost of 3.6. Two cores lets it get up to 3.7 and XFR boosted an additional 200 megahertz to 3.9 gigahertz. Another big difference between the 1500X and the 1600X is the 1500X does come with a Wraith Spire cooler. We'll talk about that one a bit more in the Wraith, or not the Wraith, but rather the Ryzen 5 1500X paired with an RX 480 video that we'll have coming up very soon. So there are two additional videos and maybe some more on the way past this one. So what system did we use to test all of this? Well, it's very simple. Um, AMD did provide us with a B350 board and we figured with the pricing of these two particular chips that's most likely going to be the board that you look at. 1500X coming in at 190 US dollars and the 1600X coming in at 250 US dollars. So a, B3, a B350 board seems quite reasonable and the fact that this uh, MSI B350 Tomahawk comes in at $110 and is quite robust for the, what it has. Now we are testing again with the MSI B350 Tomahawk motherboard with BIOS version 
3T6, so 1.3T6. I haven't gotten confirmation back from AMD whether this is featuring the new AGESA code, so, but I can say compared to the X370 X Power Gaming Titanium that we did the 1800X initial review on, this motherboard clocks more aggressively, holds XFR for a much longer amount of time, and is much better with the memory. Moving on to memory, AMD did send us out a kit of um, Gil 3200 Evo X RAM, and it would run on two of the CPUs, the 1600X and the 1800X, at DDR4-3200. But G-Skill stepped in and sent us a kit of Flare X DDR4-3200 MHz and on this motherboard, it ran all configurations at DDR4 3200CL14 with zero problems. So all of the results that we have in this video feature this RAM paired with each of the processors. Now, all of the tests were run with a GTX 1080 installed. And hold your horses before we go into the, oh, God, Keith, oh, you should have paired it with that. The, the, the simple fact that we're comparing the 1500X, 1600X, and 1800X against each other rather than their competitors on the other side of the fence with Intel, there should be no issue with this. So 1080p, settings are labeled on the graphs, and using the GTX 1080 with the latest drivers at the time that we filmed this. So with all of that out of the way, let's take a look at the actual performance of these three CPUs to see which one offers the sweet spot that you're looking for. Well, there you have it. Those are the results. You could see clearly in the CPU test that the scaling was quite nice going from the quad to the six to the eight core processors. However, once you got into gaming, that variation diminished quite a bit, but you did see good gains on where, in my opinion, it matters the most, which is the 1% and the 0.1% lows, resulting in a much smoother overall gameplay experience the higher tier you go. Keep in mind, this is with a GTX 1080. This is a $500 graphics card. And when you're using, you're, you're shopping for something in the ballpark of $190 to $250 for a CPU, the vast majority of people are probably not looking to spend $500 on a graphics card. So something you will want to take a look at is the video that we have coming up with the 1500X and paired up with a, an RX 480 to see kind of how things perform at that. So it's a $190 CPU, a $200 graphics card, see how that works. However, truth be told, that RX, uh, the Ryzen 5 1500X did it quite admirably, save for the few instances where uh, the game really scaled well with those extra cores. Now I'm sure somebody out there is wondering, but Keith, what about overclocking? I heard that with less cores, you should be able to overclock even better. Sort of. Um, all three chips, the 1800X, 1600X, and 1500X, all hit 4.0 across all cores at 1.36 volts. Now, the 
1500X was the only one I was able to get stable and continue to stay stable at 4.125. And that was at 1.42 volts. And it did get quite hot. Another thing I'd like to touch on, the plus 20 degree offset was persistent on the 1600X, but did not exist on the 1500X, which quite frankly, with that Spire cooler, made it a much more enjoyable uh, experience, which that may be why AMD did that, left it at the non uh, offset so that the fan curve with the stock included cooler stayed nice and cool and quiet. But guys, I can't make up your mind for you on whether you want the Ryzen 5 uh, 1500X 1600X for the Ryzen 7 1800X because quite frankly you're going to need to figure out what your needs are and which one of these best fits the demand that you're going to have for it. Are you just gaming? Are you doing a little bit of both? Or are you mostly doing workstation productivity tasks and occasionally gaming on the side? But you're definitely going to want to see how these perform up against the competition and like I said before anywhere around me right now on launch day on YouTube there's going to be a plethora of options if you want to see those. I wanted to keep this one focused specifically on the Ryzen series to see which one you wanted to target for your budget. Stay tuned as we will be bringing you a six core showdown with the 1600X overclocked along with an overclocked i7-6800K to see which one throws down the best numbers in, in well, CPU benches as well as gaming. And we may have a change of test systems for our, per our uh, dedicated test system back here behind me. But that may be up to you guys as well as that video I've already spoken about with the Ryzen 5 1500X paired with an RX 480 to see what kind of gaming performance you get both stock and overclocked with those CPUs and GPU configuration. This has been Keith with WCCF Tech TV. If you found this video informative or entertaining in the least, feel free to leave a like and subscribe while you're at it. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below and hopefully I'll be able to give you an adequate answer. Want to see more? Stay tuned. We have more coming. Thank you so much.